This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Please bow your head and close your eyes. Dear God, our Father, Lord, we come today to thank you for this chapel service. Please, God, bless us and nothing, well, everything good happens today. Um, I hope everybody is well. I hope your family members are well. And we just pray that you would keep us safe. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Today's scripture, Proverbs 27. The godly walk with integrity. Blessed are their children after them. Please stand for the Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for his kingdom is stand. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty for all who believe. Please pledge to the Bible uh, begin. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a land unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide his words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Please pledge to the American flag begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for our HPCA mantra. Place your right hand over your heart and repeat after me. As an ambassador, I am patient. As an ambassador, I am wise. As an ambassador, I am gracious in speech. As an ambassador, I am generous. As an ambassador, I am honest. As an ambassador, I have readiness of mind. As an ambassador, I am humble. As an ambassador, I am confident. Established in the faith, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught. Established in the faith, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith. Walk in him, walk in him, walk in him, walk in him. 
Good morning, ambassadors, and welcome back to chapel. I'm super excited about today's lesson because our older ambassadors are leading us today in worship. Our middle school ambassadors, that's sixth, seventh, and eighth grade students. And their lesson today is entitled, Walking in Integrity. Remember, I taught you that word last week. Integrity just means doing the right thing even when no one is looking. So I hope you enjoy today's lesson. Hello, and welcome to today's lesson. Today, we're going to learn about integrity. A person who has integrity is someone who believes in kindness, honesty, and fairness, and practices those things every day in every way. For example, a person who is nice one day but then tricks or teases someone on another day does not have integrity. But a person who always does the right thing because it's what they believe in, well, that person does have integrity. So if you are kind, truthful, honest, and fair, and you act that way every day, Pretty soon, people will see you as a person with integrity. And that's a super goal to aim for. That's the power of integrity. Now, here's your challenge. How can you practice living with integrity as an individual? In your classroom, and as part of your school. Good luck in your challenge. And good luck practicing integrity. Remember, integrity means being kind, truthful, honest, and fair each and every day. I know we have some birthdays to celebrate this week, but before we celebrate birthdays, I would like for us to um, look at two more African-American heroes that have made significant contributions to black history. Let's take a look. It was the start of the 19th century. Black Americans had lived in America since the 17th century, yet Hollywood refused to tell black stories. If a black actor wanted a part in a Hollywood movie, it was to portray a grotesquely racist caricature. But even those roles were hard to find. White actors were often hired over black actors to play these caricatures. Then came along a man named Oscar Michaud. Oscar didn't care about Hollywood or racist American laws. He broke all the rules. When Oscar was 17 years old, he worked as a railway porter. He met many wealthy Americans while traveling across the United States. Oscar heard again and again to be wealthy in the United States, a person needed to own land. In 1862, the U.S. government was offering land out west for cheap. This was called the Homestead Act. The land was cheap because the U.S. government had stolen the land from the Native Americans. One day, Oscar collected his savings and headed west. Unfortunately, Oscar's homestead application was denied. Oscar realized that the U.S. government did not intend for Black Americans to benefit from the Homestead Act. Nonetheless, Oscar didn't take no for an answer. He hired a broker to find property that was in foreclosure and he purchased land in South Dakota. But being a black homesteader was challenging. Every evening, Oscar would write his hardships into stories. His stories became so popular that his novel, The Homesteader, garnered the attention of a black-owned Los Angeles film company. They negotiated a deal with Oscar to adapt the book into a movie. When the film company refused to allow Oscar to be a part of the production, Oscar changed his mind. He decided to produce the film himself. 
With no previous experience, Oscar Michaud wrote, produced, and directed The Homesteader. The Homesteader premiered on February 2nd, 1919 to a packed 8,000 seat theater in Chicago. An opera singer and jazz musicians opened the screening. It became the first ever feature length film with an all black cast. In 1915, Birth of a Nation premiered across America. The movie depicted the Ku Klux Klan as heroes and black Americans as violent and evil. The movie was the first blockbuster Hollywood hit. It was the most profitable film of its day. Michaud challenged Birth of a Nation with his own movie, Within Our Gates. Oscar's film flipped the narrative by showing the main character, Sylvia Landry, brutalized by white oppressors. Oscar produced his movies on a shoestring budget. He filmed in friends' homes with borrowed props and costumes. There was no money for retakes. And still, Oscar faced yet another challenge. Most movie theaters were owned by white Americans, and these owners refused to play black films. But Oscar wouldn't take no for an answer. Sometimes Oscar would rent out entire theaters to show the film. Other times, Oscar would convince the theater owners to book special midnight screenings for black audiences. These special showings later became known as Midnight Rambles. Oscar was a pioneer and visionary in many ways. His movies dealt with topics that were controversial at that time. Topics like interracial relationships and abortion. He was a polarizing figure. His stories tackled issues like race, segregation, and lynching. White Americans disliked Oscar's films because he called out racial injustices. Some black Americans rejected Oscar's movies because he had an affinity for casting black actors with lighter skin tones. At the same time, Oscar's films depicted contemporary black life with complex characters. And for that reason, most Americans loved Oscar's films. Imagine being a black filmmaker during the Jim Crow era. Most folks were trying to survive, much less have the chance to create black cinema for black audiences. Yet, Oscar did just that. Oscar went on to produce 44 films during his lifetime. Unfortunately, he died almost bankrupt. Oscar's films at the time were never accepted by Hollywood. Then, in 1986, Oscar was posthumously admitted to the Directors Guild of America and given a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The youngest of 15, Parks arrives, stillborn, and is nearly left for dead until a dip in ice water shocks his tiny heart to beat. The baby is named for the man who saved his life, Dr. Gordon. When young Gordon crosses the prairie on horseback, nothing seems beyond reach. But his white teacher tells her all black class, you'll all wind up porters and waiters. What does she know? After Gordon loses his mother at age 15, he moves in with his sister in Minnesota. Soon, on his own, Gordon works odd jobs, busboy, piano player, and finally, porter and waiter. 25 years old and all but broke, when a magazine spread about migrant farm workers inspires him to buy a used camera. That $7.50 is the best money he will ever spend. In one month, he teaches himself enough for an exhibit at a camera store. Soon, he is shooting fashion and portraits. One model tells him to take his camera to the big city. In Chicago, Gordon's shots of struggling families in the South Side win him a chance to be a government photographer. He leaves the Midwest and turns his camera on Washington. Gordon wonders, what should I shoot? Search for a subject, says his boss. In the nation's capital, he passes the White House and the Supreme Court. In the shadow of the Capitol, 
He sees black families living in alley dwellings. He can see that blacks have it harder than whites. He passes statues, monuments, and memorials to mighty heroes. But there are enough photos of white men carved in marble granite. He glimpses whites only signs in shop windows and he learns firsthand that even if there is no sign, it doesn't mean that a black man will be served. Boiling and mad, Parks vows to lay bare racism with his lens. He shares his vision with his boss who points him toward his subject. Talk to her. She knows the struggle. She is Ella Watson, a cleaning lady in the building where Parks works. She supports her grandchildren on just over $1,000 a year. The photographer follows her for weeks, home, church, and to work at four in the afternoon. After a long day, she studies the Bible with her family. Gordon takes pictures of her grandchildren too, dressing, eating, reading, playing, not yet knowing the racism that they will surely face. Over his long career, Gordon's photos will run in Vogue and Life magazines, their first black photographer. He will write novels, make movies, compose music and poetry, and be held a Renaissance man. But Gordon's most famous shot will be American Gothic. In the newspaper, the photo exposed to the nation the unfairness of segregation. Standing before the flag of freedom, cleaning lady Ella Watson holds the tools of her trade and the hopes of her grandchildren. She knows all too well that the opportunities the flag symbolizes are denied her because of the color of her skin. Yet she dares to dream of and strive for better. Through Gordon's lens, her struggle gained a voice. You don't have to hear her story to know her prayer. Celebrating a birthday this week, Ms. Alexis Wheeler, Uriah Fletcher, and Josiah Wright. Happy birthday, ambassadors. We hope you enjoy your day. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. God bless you all. Look forward to seeing you next week for chapel.